Welcome back to Management Decision Tools. In this section, we will look at two examples on how we may convert uh, or model a real-life situation involving uh, assignment uh, sort of decisions into a integer and or binary linear programming model. So here is Tina's tailoring example. Uh, very simple kind of situation. Nevertheless, uh, it's a situation that we quite commonly encounter. And that is that in this tailoring shop, there are five uh, workers, five tailors, and there are, at the moment, four uh, pieces of work to be done, four garments to be sold. And <clears throat> the estimated time in hours, so we gather the cost right, of, of performing the task. Uh, worker one performing the task of uh, completing the wedding gown will take 19 hours. Yeah, okay, so this is something that we have to find out uh, because that is true for that situation and it's not 19 hours for another shop, another tailor. And true enough, for tailor 2, it is uh, going to be 23 hours, so a bit longer, right? So does it mean therefore we start comparing and assigning wedding gown to tailor 1? Well, we have to consider other uh, combinations, yeah, because for example, uh, if we assign to tailor one wedding gown, we wouldn't have uh, benefited from the expertise of tailor one in clown costume, right? And uh, because because she's quite good at it, uh, but of course we can then compare with tailor five, which takes one hour less, better, right? Uh, but if we start comparing numbers like these, we are effectively becoming the number solver, and we are competing with Excel solver. That is something that you don't want to get into because that's not our forte, not, that's not human's forte. Our task here is really not to get sucked into the comparisons and calculations of numbers, but formulate it, right? Formulate it, help solver see this problem and then let solver solve it for us. Now, uh, the first step to linear programming uh, model or questions or situations uh, usually involve asking what what decision am i making right so if you're asking how many do i need how much do i must i uh, uh, deploy then those questions will be best answered by a the generic decision variable so we'll have a decision variable for that unknown uh, or yet to be optimized quantity right now our decision is very simple uh should i or should i not right should I or should I not assign wedding gown to tailor one? Yeah, so that would be one decision. And of course, we can also make other decisions like should I or should I not assign clown costume to tailor five? And should I or should I not assign uh, Moo Fighters outfit to tailor three and tailor two? And of course, we should be asking uh, four times five questions four times five yes no should i should i not questions in other words we want the 20 decision variables to be binary all right yeah so we let's let's just quickly retrace again why did we arrive at this situation right we were wondering we were trying to decide uh hopefully in the optimal manner should we or should we not assign wedding gown to tailor one tailor two tailor three and so on or, or in other words another way to put it is uh, who shall I, to whom shall I assign wedding gown? That is a very common question, right? So it involves not quantity, but yes, no, do or don't. And therefore, uh, it gives rise to a binary situation. Yeah? So take note of this, this, uh, this slow down process of, of uh, arriving at this conclusion that we should be using binary variables. So how many variables are there? <coughs> Easily four times five. But there are exceptions, isn't it? Um, for example, uh, Taylor one uh, was uh, injured by a bull the last time she visited uh, the zoo. So she vows never to touch bullfighters of it. All right. Uh, Taylor three was uh, terrified by a clown when she was young, and she swears she will never, never touch clown costume ever. All right. And uh, 
Taylor Four was dishonorably discharged from the military, and she was uh, telling herself she would never touch anybody's uniform from the military. Okay, I'm I'm making these now, right? But but, oh well, as just just to inject some fun and and background, but uh, it's not as far fetched as it sounds because people can have Taylor uh not Taylor, people can have subjective preferences. Uh, why? Why are you not touching clown costume? I just don't like it, right? So, um, if that is the case, especially with, uh, perhaps contract workers and temporary staff and even um, uh, permanent employees, you would want to, uh, sometimes respect their choices. Um, so beyond efficiency and productivity, there are preferences, and maybe the tailor is uh on leave, uh, falls ill, and therefore not available, right? Even if she's very very efficient with a particular costume. So uh, we have all these axes and we wonder how we can implement them. Now, when there is an X here, obviously the decision variable is going to be zero. So in some sense, although we need a matrix of five by four, 20 variables, uh, these unassignable uh, slots or decision variables are going to poke holes into this otherwise very complete uh, matrix of variables. Yeah. So therefore, uh, how should we do it? Uh, answer is very simple. The outcome is known. In other words, it's zero. We cannot assign. And therefore, there is no need for a decision variable because it implies that we are not sure whether we should or should not assign, right? Answer is no, cannot assign because it's just physically not possible. So we are going to minus all these decision variables ending with just 17 decision variables. All right, so so here you see that we we spent some time thinking about uh what are the decision variables and how do we define them, right? Um, but actually it's not that complicated. But uh, the for the rest of the the constraints, it is just to follow uh what the tailor shop or the owner or the situation entails. Um, <clears throat> let's look at the description here, formulate a program model to determine the assignments that minimize the total estimated time spent. The total estimated time spent. Now, uh, that means adding up the total times, right? Okay, so no tailor is to be assigned more than one garment, that's a constraint. No tailor, that means if you look vertically down along the column, uh, the tailor should not have one more than once. Yeah, so if you are if Taylor wants assigned wedding gown, she cannot be assigned at the same time Emerald City Four. So that's looking down the column. Usually this kind of problem will also entail looking across the row. Yeah. So column wise you have the column constraints, row wise you have the row constraints. Usually, I'm not saying that it is always there, but if it's not there, better relook at the situation again. Uh because it is probably um under constrained. Uh, that means you haven't looked for enough constraints. Usually there will be for most physical problems. All right. So no tailor assign more than one garment. Each garment is to be worked on by only one tailor. You can put that under responsibility, accountability, right? So because it's one tailor means she will be responsible if there's some some tear, some you know, uh, or late in completion or whatever, only one tailor. If you have two tailors responsible, then they might blame each other. Or whatever right but i'm not saying this is the right thing to do i'm just saying this is the policy enforced by T tina in her tailor shop right so we need to implement her policy as a constraint uh, how do we do that <clears throat> okay so very simply <clears throat> two lines but they fan out across all the columns and all the rows so fair enough uh we have 12 or rather five times four 20 decision variables minus three and we end up having 17 yes no one zero question uh, decision variables now a um, little bit of uh, <clears throat> focus that i like to bring you to and that is the assigning assignment of the meanings to ones and zeros and we should be using positive logic here all right so let me just emphasize that uh, what is positive logic that is the usual conventional uh, definition one means assign all right one means assign zero don't assign now why i say this is because uh, some of you might be mathematically inclined we uh, it is possible 
not that I encourage, but I'm just explaining. It is possible to define yij to be 1 minus xij so that we say that <clears throat> for yij, 0 means assign uh, garment i to Taylor j and 1 means don't assign. And that is completely uh, um, okay with the mathematical part. But not okay with the human readability part, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, we're just not quite used to zero means do it, yeah. Okay, I mean, some of us electrical engineers might be trained to think okay with that logic, but um, yeah, it's less expressive. Remember, first lesson we were saying that uh, for linear programming model, uh, don't try to simplify, cancel all the coefficients so that they totally look alien to. Uh, the numbers originally present in the situation, in the business situation. So, uh, readability, because readability, um, clari clarity is very important uh, because solving it uh, otherwise with, with uh, uh, non-simplified coefficients and, and lengthy kind of uh, uh, description might take up a few more milliseconds, right? by the solver to solve it but that's okay that's that's not impactful in real life yeah but if you your your model is described in an awkward way like negative logic or um totally simplified coefficients that we have to start multiplying back in our mind to to find where the numbers were originally that is even worse right that will take up more time to consult to clarify so end up <laughs> it's not a good business case to to uh, simplify and cancel out and arbitrarily use negative logic because it muddles the communication. It's less clear. It sometimes is even ambiguous. So don't use negative logic. Stick to positive uh, representation of the action. So one means do, one means invest, one means assign, one means uh, um, act on it. Zero, don't. Right? Zero will be otherwise. Clear? All right.